Rating. Never mind. Having gone on to restream, we should now be live on Facebook and Twitter. You want to check? Yay! Okay, that's working on Facebook. I just got the notification from YouTube, so. Excellent. Marvellous. Say hello, pretty people, down in hello, live chat. People. Humans. A little bit loud. A bit loud. But it awesome that went straight in the only annoying thing is when i've hotkeyed different numbers so i can just switch between all these different screens it's it's typing it in the restream chat so it ends up coming up with all these different numbers and i might accidentally press enter so if i do send out a message of just random numbers it's not some secret illuminati code or anything like that um is it oh are you a bit quiet now what's going on Audio was perfect beforehand. Maybe I just need to speak up. Oh, that audio is completely different to when we started. Oh no! That's a terrible, terrible thing. It was perfectly fine just a second ago. I haven't changed any settings concerning volume or audio. Um. Oh dear. That's not good. How about that? What you? How, oh, is, that how is this? Am I? Is this any better? It should be better. It certainly sounds better to me. Okay. So, whew, hello. <laughs> Sorry about hello. that. Let us know in the uh, in the chat for the YouTube's and Facebooks and the Twitters. It should all come up as the same chat for me, and I'll. I'll try, because this is still slightly experimental, going on all these different platforms. But, Junk Shop, hello. How are we? I'm well. How about yourself? Uh, excellent. Marvellous, in fact. Uh, for those that are joining us on Facebook and the Twitters, uh, this is going out on YouTube. So if you're completely unaware of the channel, we do interviews of all sorts of various different people within the atheist and secular community. Um, they don't have to be atheists. We do have Ocean. El Toy and uh, who else was it? Uh, Megan Lewis from Digital Hammurabi on as well. Um, discussing all sorts of lovely various things that have pretty much nothing to do with religion because I'm not particularly interested in the conversation. This is this is a channel for people who want to tr try and move on, really, uh, and provide some escapism. So hopefully that's what we're going to do. There are a plethora of people arriving in the live chat come say hello and ask your questions tag me wally dr and that sort of thing and it should flash up I'm not sure what it will do on restream um uh, but there we are um but uh julie says uh best talk right into your mic it, it should it should be fine now let us know what the uh the audio quality is like on all the different platforms it might be different hello a bit of tea in danish hey linda I'll get around to a question, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we started uh, our conversation just by clarifying how I should even so much as uh, identify you and uh, what, what I should call you. So, at the minute, you'll go by uh, Junk Shop and Them. Is that right? Correct, yes. How long has this been for you? Well, I... Uh... I just came out as non-binary uh, right at a month ago. I think it was a month ago yesterday. And um, the, the junk shop imprimatur has been, has been me from the beginning of, of my social media presence, which was uh, January of last year. Just kind of came barging onto the scene and, and jumped on all the social medias at once. I'm a late adopter. Yeah, no, don't worry about it, because um, it's uh, it's it's one of those things where, um, or it, it, sometimes it's quite difficult to adjust, and so 
Uh, I, I will end up in introducing a new drinking rule. We do have a, a very loose drinking game on the channel for those that are new. Uh, various different things like when I mention my trip to America, I have to drink. Uh, when, when we do national stereotypes, when we uh, make fun of Neil or Shannon for saying a boot, things like that. So uh, if I do end up misgendering anybody, then please do drink. Um, and, and point it out. So I'll, I do want to make an effort. You know. Yeah. Uh, what I really wanted to know is what is what's the actual reaction been like from people from a perspective of going from one to the other? Um, have people mostly been supportive, I assume. Uh, people have been entirely supportive. I have I have yet to receive any negative feedback of course i have yet to come out to my extremely conservative family so mm. i i imagine there's some interesting reactions awaiting me but i'm just sort of putting that off as best i can <laughs> yeah i can understand why there's there's a few different little stories like that so what is your exact background again we don't go into religion so much uh hey ishtiak uh, they're, they're very happy that I actually pronounce their name properly. Um, I hope I didn't butcher it just then. But they're, they're obviously very conservative, very religious, possibly assume Christian. And uh, as such, they would be anticipated to have a more backward view, a more repulsive view. So they, I'm guessing they don't have a, f a full understanding of what it even so much as means to be non-binary, if I'm correct. So do you want to give people an expl explanation as to what that even is? Well, it's... Um, ma many of us who identify as non-binary find that we don't fully fall within the, um, the expected parameters either of being entirely male or entirely female. And and uh, prefer to see it as less a binary choice and more of a, a spectrum. A lot of us fall somewhere in between. Uh, and then there's also a camp that sees non-binary entire as a third option. Um, I, I'm a little more in the, the fluid space myself than a, a designated third encampment, but uh, mm. that's, that's my, at least my understanding and perspective of it in a nutshell. Again, I'm I'm fairly new to this uh, to this scene and this identity myself. So it just it was yeah. one of those moments where all of the mental Tetris pieces fall into place simultaneously, and you realize, oh, that's what it is, and that's me. <laughs> Do you have uh, a degree of um, of dissonance, as it were, when you when you see some of your older content and and you have uh, like, uh, I, I remember first seeing you with sort of more messy hair, mustache, and all of that. Does that now feel like, well, I mean, how does that feel? So I, I wouldn't know. Well, it's honestly, it doesn't bother me at all. I, I've gone through, I've had every hairstyle, every facial hair configuration that, that I am capable of growing, uh, going all the way back to, to my late teens. I've had I've had hair down to here. I've been completely clean shaven. I've had the the bald head and the Anton LaVey uh, goatee. I've I've had a full beard that came out like this, sort of the lumberjack thing. So it's essentially just one more iteration of me. And when I go back and look at my older content, I'm like, well, that that was that was a choice. That was a choice that I made. An interesting one sometimes. <laughs> and sometimes it's just a matter of laziness. Sometimes the big bushy hair was just, it had been nine months since I bothered to go get a haircut. So. Yeah, fair enough. I know, I know what it feels like. I mean, I, I, I don't, obviously don't know what it'd be like having a different gender assignment to my sex, as, as it were. I don't know, quite know how to word that, but you know what I mean. I'm one yeah. of these terrible straight white male men that your you know mother warned you about and uh <laughs> i 
I, I'm fascinated by the actual experience of it itself. You know, some, there's some arguments where I can see there's different trans people that uh, disagree with each other. There's, you know, there's various different people within uh, the LGB community that would reject the T. So, are you, are you, would you consider yourself part of the T or the like? Which which letter is it for you? Uh, for me, it's more of the Q. Um, Q. I've got, I've got enough. Uh, enough going on and enough balls in the air to where I, I don't I don't find I fall neatly into any any balls category in, yeah. so I'll just <laughs> I'll just go with queer and um, and identify that way uh, being non-binary and uh, pansexual and a number of other things I find the the Q is the easiest one to to identify my it's the it's the easiest bucket to jump into as it were yeah, I as much as I I can't relate. I I, I sometimes joke about um, so when I take off the sides. Normally, when I do a haircut, I do it myself. So quarantine's been fine for me, um, and I I'd end up doing something like a two on the sides, eight on top. If that means anything in America, yes, yeah, it's just it's just a length. Yeah. So uh, when I end up having the second haircut, I sometimes just take the sides off, and then I call that my lesbian hair as it were uh, but it's <laughs> it's nothing at all to do with you know any <laughs> identification it's just just me having a laugh basically so yeah it's it's been very interesting to try and find out more about this sort of conversation i i went to an all boys school and naturally you can imagine the level of masculinity and the amount that words like gay are thrown around or retard and things that are typically frowned upon uh, within these circles. But again, just, they, they just get said so casually, that you just don't even pick up on intent. So I th one thing I was going to ask, actually, is there are some people that are, are very, uh, I don't want to say militant, I, I want to say strict when it comes to dead naming um do you want to explain what that means and then how you view it Whew, that's uh that's a little bit outside my wheelhouse that's that's more of a a um and it uh a thing for for people who are trans um okay my my un this junk shop is is just my my nom de plume, my nom de guerre, my nom de internet. Um, stage name, not, kind of. Stage yeah. name, yes. Yeah. Um, but my understanding of it, again, strictly from an outsider perspective, is that, um, is it, sorry, I'm trying to tread very carefully here because this, you know what, it's I'd okay. actually probably better not answer that question because that's, that's not even, I, I do not have the trans experience and so, Speak, ah, so that's still to, speaking to that. I don't think is is something that would be appropriate for me to do. That's okay. That I mean, that's useful because I wouldn't initially know where to uh, attach the the whole dead naming thing to. Like, a, a, does it apply to non-binary? Does it apply to gender fluid? Does it a t a apply to transgender or transsexual? Or how how just trying to map the network for somebody who is, as I said disgusting human, human being uh yep. is trying to understand <laughs> this and and it will take time and you know things like as i said they um don't roll off the tongue as easy because of decades of he she so yeah okay. i'll get there i'll get there but i'm glad that you've well, had a positive experience so. yeah i i completely agree uh i i, I think it's Sometimes we can, and I haven't mentioned um, the the book yet, and I will uh, eventually. I, there is a passage in it where I say there's certain moments where we feel like we can't even start the conversation. We we feel like we're just holding our breath. We're like, I I can't actually get the first word out of my mouth because I fear criticism. I fear the the stigma of getting something wrong, um, and then that being held against me eternity 
uh, and, and you can you can talk to somebody like oh let's not name names uh, just imagine somebody that doesn't correct their mistake and doubles down and then triples down and then quadruples down yeah. then there's a case but if somebody makes a mistake and it's oh shit yeah you know? M- mistakes out of ignorance or mistakes out of out of just sort of linguistic habit are, are one th- I mean I'm not going to hold it against anybody who who keys me because I I do pr- even some of the interesting hair choices and and things in presentation aside I do present mostly he um most of the time mm. but uh it you know it's it's one thing to it's one thing to screw up and it's another thing to <laughs> belabor a point and to refuse change and there are there are yeah. those people who who just absolutely and adamantly refuse to uh to change it's like they're it's it's going to be 1992 forever god damn it <laughs> and and some of those people are just not worth having conversations with and that's all there is to it some people yeah. you just gotta let go and you know go with no god and yeah move on i yeah uh, I, I don't want to uh sound like i'm nitpicking i'm just trying to clarify but um when you describe it as uh it's going back to something a, a point i didn't pick up on earlier you said uh non-binary is to do with male and female mm-hmm. uh my initial understanding was it, it was to do with men and women but so that would be gender rather than sex so again I'm not telling you that that's the way it is. That was just my understanding. I, I may, so. I may well have have misspoken regarding that point. Um, ah. It's it's a a for me and from my perspective, I I fall outside of the the typical gender norms. Okay. Uh, as a as opposed to any anything with regard to biology, I'm not. Mm. Uh, I only wish to, to to clarify. Like I'm not trying to yeah, sure. point it out. And, and I'm, so, and you're like wrong. Said, I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty new to this myself, so I'm trying real hard not to put my foot in my own mouth or mm. or try uh, tread on any toads that are are not mine to tread upon. So. I could be wrong. Let us know in your in the comments, especially if you have any hate. We haven't had any. Uh, hate for junk shop yet so we really want some if we could just throw down your hate uh down in the live chat that'd be, that'd be great awesome <laughs> thank you <laughs> this is what we do <laughs> it's a gateway this channel is a get um i there are some there are some people within certain circles and i won't name them that seem to end up being so completely unforgiving uh and i th- think you, you you might know who i'm talking about um but on on the whole the majority of the lgbtq however many letters there are community uh are, are generally very very nice people um i wanted to just caveat uh, into the whole uh family situation if you're comfortable talking about it um do you foresee like a point in the future where you would feel comfortable saying you know what this is uh just as as an update this is the way i am and uh you know i'm going off in this direction and you can come with me or not it's it's entirely your decision do do you see that happening any time soon uh with with some of them there there are Honestly, there are are some members of my family with whom the conversation would be so difficult and would require so much explanation. And they are so old (laughs) that at this point, it may not be worth introducing that level of stress into their lives. Okay. If that makes any sense. It's you know, there yeah. are there are certain members of my family that I haven't 
and I know you stay clear of religion, um, but I, I haven't come we can out go as, into it. Yeah, as sorry. an atheist to certain members of my family and, and more likely than not, never will. It's just, there's no, there's no sense in putting that on them because then they would worry and stress and, and have to do extra rosaries and so forth and so on. And that's kind of where I am with the, with the non-binary thing is there are, there are times and, and there are individuals that I think that's a conversation worth having. And as yet, there are others, you know, nothing may change. It, it may come to a point where, where he uh, pronouns coming at me might come to be such a burden that I, I would feel the need to, to come out a little more forcefully i uh, i don't foresee that eventuality being soon if that mm. makes any sense would you have any advice for anybody who might be coming out at all uh talk your question to your peer group. <laughs> talk to your peer group and and have a have a wide peer group that's the, the glorious thing about the internet is, is we can all have friends all over the world with all stages of experience and, and there are, and you will find assistance and wisdom in some very unlikely places, places you wouldn't necessarily think to look. But expand your peer group, talk to, Talk to people and find people you can trust and talk especially to them. As I, a lot of a lot of information and a lot of feedback from from a handful of very specific people um, was immensely helpful to me at various stages of my I don't know journey sounds a little a, a little epic, but um, my yeah. my uh, process. And, and that was immensely helpful. And some of you know who you are, and I appreciate you. Um, people who are regulars to the channel will know that I go swings and roundabouts up and down with the conversations. We get very sort of deep, and then we sort of end up going into the whimsical as well. Uh, so what are you drinking out of interest? Coffee. Oh, it's just coffee. OK. <laughs> just, just plain black coffee. It's. It's two thirty in the <laughs> afternoon here, <laughs> so it's a little early for anything but coffee for me. You've you've watched, you've actually looked at a, a, a clock in the past two months. <laughs> if you not lost, yeah, you, well, I, I try to keep myself on some space. semblance of a schedule just for my own sanity and peace of mind. But uh, mm. yeah. so I was uh, going to go into that actually because you must have a very similar sort of sleeping pattern to me in that you are as far as i understand a writer yes so what do you write is it uh novels books blogs what sort of um i've area? got i've got one novel that i've finished i've got two that i'm kind of kicking around and that are kicking back pretty hard um but primarily i do uh short stories uh in kind okay. of the the old weird fiction sense you know something that could have appeared in in weird tales or in ec comics back in the day yeah given i was born in 93 back in the day could be you know as far back as 92 for all i know okay i'm i'm talking about more like the the 30s and 40s or, or even okay <laughs> that, you know pre-comics code yeah. Sort of old school Honestly, tales from the crypt and that kind of thing. You're looking great for your age. Well, I, well, I thank you. It's <laughs> it's all it's it's bathing in the blood of the virgins. That's is really the trick. <laughs> so you also, I'll I'll try and find that link to the novels if the the moderators, particularly on YouTube, can't find the link first. As I said, everyone head over from Facebook and Twitter onto YouTube and then there's the whole live chat and all the Nightbot commands as well and all the fun you can have in, in the live chat that's already sitting there, uh, exclamation mark commands. Uh, moderators will guide you towards the fun. 
Uh, at least not what should be should be working. I'll check in just a second because it wasn't yes. <laughs> Good old Nightbot. Sometimes he works yeah. and sometimes he does not. Nightbot. Uh, so it's, yeah, I was going to go into um, writing, and then I was going to go. Uh, where was I going to go? Well, your library. That's where I was going to go. Mm. Junk shop library. So the name obviously comes from. Where? <laughs> um, the general state of, of clutter and disrepair of my library. Uh, <laughs> if you can go back, I've, I'm in several new settings uh, over the years. And this one right now seems to work best because it's close enough to my router to where I can plug directly in with an Ethernet cable, which seems to have solved some of my internet issues. Uh, but if you go back to the, the earlier material, most of it was shot in a, a very, very cluttered uh, library room. That's my, my study, my sanctuary. And when I was trying to come up with a name for the channel, I was just kind of looking around thinking, well, it's, I'm going to be shooting here. So what does this look like? What is this? This looks like somebody opened a junk shop in the middle of an abandoned library. And I thought, that's it. <laughs> and the rest, as they say, is history. A whole year's worth of history. <laughs> we have a, a random question um, from somebody, I don't know, called Julie LaVoice, whoever they are. Oh, and they yeah. ask, uh, please ask Junk Shop when we're going to sort out the study. Never. <laughs> Well, we've got time now. We're still under quarantine here, so at least theoretically. Are you... Our governor saw fit not to uh, not to renew the safer at home order, but those of us who are sane and value our health are staying at home regardless. I was going to ask: Are you married? I didn't. I didn't actually know. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. Julie Lavoie is uh, is my wife. Yeah, I wasn't sure. <laughs> gotcha. That's what, yeah. Just background, that's all. Being curious. Um, nice. Doorknob Head asks, I'm, I'm always very reluctant when, whenever Doorknob Head asks a question, because uh, it yeah. could go in any direction. What are some of the potions of the junk shop library which qualify as junk? Examples? I'm sorry, did you say potions? Potions, yeah. Potions? Uh, coffee? Tea? Tequila? Wait, yeah. <laughs> Ishtiak asks, could you ask Junk Shop what their writing process is? Um, no, I'm not going to call out Ishtiak. Don't give Ishtiak hate just because they said his. Okay. They. Fine. No, it's, it's just cool. um, just Calm the fuck about. down. Okay. YouTube, just calm the fuck down. <laughs> um, yeah, it's writing I... process, characters, and plot. Is what... Right. Okay, sure. Um, well, it tends to go to one or one of two extremes. Either I have characters that just bloom fully formed in my head, and then I have to send them on adventures and find out what they're going to do. Or I have one of two things, an opening line or a closing line that just pops into my head. I've, I've had some of my best results with either just randomly thinking of an opening line and just seeing what seems to logically follow from there or from having a final line just drop into my head full formed by the muses and say well how in the world do we get to there what 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 brings us what brings us to that conclusion and that's that's always an adventure so uh you said you you'd written a novel what's it called Ah, okay, let me clarify. Written, not yet published. Ah. Uh, yeah, oh, I'm sorry. If anybody's, if anybody's looking on Amazon, they are, ne they are not yet going to find it. <laughs> um, it's, it's called Red Rose Amnesia. Hmm, good name. Good name for a band. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know enough people. Um, 
Dorian B says, uh, just caught up on the Shields. It was a fun show. I don't know whether that was a show that was just happening or whether it was my appearance on the Shields. Um, but thank you uh, for being here. Uh, who did Junk Shop's hair? Godless Granny asks. <laughs> Hi, Godless Granny. Uh, I did myself with a, a, a spare no expense pair of $25 clippers. I just went in and zzz, 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 zzz. It is fun. That's, that's why it looks so spectacular. It's. It also when it when it's that thin, you can just run your hands through it, and it's just like this very. It's just. Like oh yes, it's it's very tactilely texture. pleasing. If I yes. <laughs> I try to avoid doing this on camera just because it kind of looks weird to be forever doing this. But yes, I do that a lot. Yeah, I was going to say we we can't do that because it's before watershed. But then again, we're an international. <laughs> podcast so it's always going to be before the water watershed somewhere there we are uh so i i eventually got round to it uh i think i've um talked enough waffle to buy myself at least 30 seconds to talk about my book <laughs> not that you're here to you know promote me but if I may take a moment, because there's lots of stuff on the, on the screen that you can't see. And I always forget that the guests can't see because we're in Zoom. Uh, but if everyone's on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, that sort of thing, uh, you'll be able to buy Fantastic Fallacies and where to find them on paperback now. The link should be in the description. Let me know whether it works, because I was trying to find the international.com link rather than the .co.uk because uh, that comes across as easier. Maybe it just defaults to your particular version of Amazon. I don't know. But the paperback is out. It's only 80 pages. Um, it's nothing ex extensive. It shouldn't be very difficult. It's meant to be for beginners. If you want to learn more about logical fallacies and as such, where to find them, then uh, I wholeheartedly recommend supporting a small-ish YouTube channel that can't get a grant off it, uh, his government because some stupid reason. Uh, so, yeah, I, I was working in schools. Um, but I don't know, that doesn't qualify apparently. So there we are. I did add your link to your YouTube channel as well in the description. I'm glad Nightbot is now working. That is up, that's ready, marvelous. Do you want to explain your YouTube channel, exactly what you do? Well, uh... What I do is I take the, I go through verse by verse of the, uh, the Bible, the King James Version from 1611, because it's the one in the public domain, and I don't have to worry about any copyright issues. And I read through one chapter at a time, and then I point out in no uncertain terms, and much of the time in highly vulgar language, uh, what exactly is wrong with it. Uh, we have, we and my, my team of regular participants in the chat have recently renamed it uh, the big book of out, uh, the big book of murder and outdated regulations, colon, utter madness and abuse. It is what it is. Um, it is what it is. Yeah, you're not lying. It's it, it's still it still fascinates me how many people think that there's a great deal of morality to be found in it. I mean, there you can find good morals just by cherry picking anything. I mean, I'm I'm sure I could probably go through Mein Kampf and I could pick out some good morals, but they, it it does a lot of bad stuff. Like it's not like a, I'm not endorsing Hitler. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's it does sort of f feel like it's on the on a par. So, how often do you actually uh, broadcast that? Uh, usually, it's Mondays and Wednesdays. Re reliably, I've managed to get myself on something approximating a schedule. It's uh, I usually broadcast live on Mondays and Wednesdays at uh, two p.m. my time, which is I think eight p.m. UK. God only knows what it is in Australia. Um, <laughs> assuming they exist, of course, which uh, you know may just be a rumor. 
I've heard that they they do exist, but I think it's like Atlantis, you know. Not really, yeah. yeah. Just. Uh, well, it's yeah. Okay. Oh, just to They're pick up petty. another. They're all shields. My apologies. Um, just to pick up another point, uh, Mr. Shadow Kitty, hello to you. Uh, that you've been saying uh, that you've been using audiobooks on YouTube. Now, I've sent off the audiobook for Fantastic Fallacies. It's with Amazon. It will be on Audible. Um, I think it will be available on iTunes. I'll have to confirm that later on. Uh, but at the minute, they say they take 30 days to get it ready. And it should just go live straight away. Uh, so I have no control over when it's out. It could be out now. It could be out next month. Who knows? Ebooks available first of June. So if you want to be the first to actually read it, then get pre-order the ebook. You'll get it on the day. So I just to clarify. Um, well, while we're talking about your book, as just because I've never been in a position with an actual author to ask this question, um, <laughs> but for uh, you know, for us uh, consumers <laughs> the, of your book, oh. um, in which from which. From sales in which format do you get the biggest cut? What benefits mm. you more? If we buy the paperback, the ebook, the audiobook, the what? Now I'm told by Lloyd Evans, uh, who's a reliable ish source. <laughs> we go back and forth taking the piss out of each other. Um, but he says audible on the audiobooks. So yeah, I uh, I I guess there's very little effort that goes into putting it out on audio. Yeah, so not, not a lot of overhead there, I suppose. They're not. Yeah, they're not. They don't need machines to print anything or format anything, and you know, they they don't uh, hmm. they don't necessarily have to put so much work in. So I'm guessing it's yeah, it, it does make sense for it to be audio book. Um, but that's a very interesting point as to how to. Uh, smaller creators um, I think I've got most of your links down in the, the description let me know if I've missed any okay I, I can't see I'm just on zoom right now I don't dare open another tab on my poor long right. phone computer I've but I'm easy got... enough to find I'm, I'm junk shop library on everything YouTube, Twitter, the Instagram Discord oh. Yeah, I've got YouTube, Patreon, what's, what's PayPal, Twitter, Insta, Discord. I thought I, you had like two links down. <laughs> I'm far <laughs> more competent than I realised. Um, yeah, so I, I, I wanted to, um, after the writing, uh, where was I going to go? Hats. Hats, yeah. What is this thing with hats? I, it's, I have a lot of hats. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, I've... literally, no, I, I have many, I have many hats. <laughs> we want the hats, we want to see the hats. Now, is this like a, a style thing? I've never been a, a hat person. I just, you oh, know, I just, I just like them. I think they look cool. And so I, I wear them a lot. Is there a big market? I don't actually know anything do with it well uh target for a hot minute about three years ago sold a lot of these you know weird little no name no brand uh <laughs> hats in various shapes and sizes there's actually there's a a dedicated hat shop where i live where you can spend anything from like 20 to 500 bucks on a hat and uh, I've spent entirely too much money there over the years <laughs> no it's uh, I, don't, it... I don't tend to wear them on stream because I move my head around too much and I get weird shadows so mm. fair enough yeah I, I mean the, the lighting is, is particularly important audio is far more important um, yeah. and nobody has started complaining in, in the chat about our audio, um, oh, apart from the fact that you. I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I I was really interested um, to to see, because you had posted a, a photo, and it was like a behind the scenes, this is what I look like when I'm working. 
like this. Oh, you were oh, sitting yes, in the yes. light, and there was darkness and darkness. shit everywhere. And yeah. so, I couldn't quite work out what it actually uh, was, but there was a lot of uh, Union Jacks on something. I wasn't sure. Oh. <laughs> like, that is my poor long-suffering couch. We had a cat <laughs> a few years back that had absolutely <laughs> eviscerated my poor long-suffering couch. And I've got I've got a roll of duct tape with the Union Jack pattern just sort of haphazardly splashed around it. And we we have literally had to duct tape the arm of the couch back together to keep it from just flying asunder all over the place. But yeah, that is that is quite prominent in that picture I noticed the other day and and also not being able to tell what in heaven's name it was. So but yes, that's the story behind the mass O Union Jacks there. It's a bad cat. Have you visited? Uh, no. You uh, want to we, visit? <laughs> I, I would love to visit at, at some time, sometime in the future, when I'm not scared to death to get in a tin can with a bunch of other people's breath. Mm. Um, uh, we were actually in uh, Scotland in November of all horrendous times to expose oneself to edinburgh's beautiful weather i i'm uh, english so anytime you expose yourself to scotland is a terrible time <laughs> <laughs> yes but we didn't we didn't make it uh didn't make it over into the uh into uh england proper this is just a slight delay. It should be fine. I think the audio is fine. It's just we uh we, we've got a slight drop in connection. I think. Yeah, I see my I see my gestures falling behind reality up there in the little preview window. So. Yeah. Never mind. We'll we'll continue anyway. Um. Again, if people do have lots of questions, then throw them down into the live chat, and I'll try and get to them as quickly as possible. So, uh, yeah, I I uh, I'm obviously always fascinated to have somebody on from America because it's just a completely different place but it just seems more and more similar every year um, especially when you look at our leaders so yes our leaders the, yeah mm. the face says everything uh, yeah. what, what do you make <laughs> of your supreme emperor oh he's so dumb and so arrogant and so useless and so pompous and so ugly and he has bad hair and he's just like there's nothing good about him i don't pull many punches you understand yeah i'm still checking the audio if you just i am listening um i'm just making sure that the stream is still of a sufficient quality oh, so sure. um yeah i uh I, it does seem to to me and i can't speak for everyone outside the international well, i don't really see much support for him outside america uh well, other he's, than he's got some friends in high Binge. places in in some lovely little dictatorships and autocracies but in terms of <laughs> people at large real people uh no i haven't heard much good from anywhere if uh, a lot of people are putting down and they sometimes test my nightbot to see which ones have actually got one uh, like links and responses. So if you if people do want me to add stuff like exclamation mark Putin, for example, then send me a bunch of emojis or whatever message you want thrown back to you in nightbot from when you type that, then uh, I'll just add it later on. I've got a window open just to make sure it's it's working. So, uh, yeah small caveat so how do you think the election in no late end of november december mm -hmm. gonna november. go november oh god i'm so full of hope and so full of terror at the same time <laughs> um i think it's all gonna come down to biden's vp choice I think a lot really? of people are going to be voting based on 
who he picks as VP because he's so goddamn old. He'll be, <clears throat> if elected, Biden will be the oldest person we've ever elected to presidential office here. And people are, people are bearing that in mind. You know, he's coming in for a four year term not quite ancient, but not missing it by much. And so I think he's going to have to be very picky about his VP choice. And I think a lot of people are going to be swayed or not swayed. People will either go third party or go with him, depending on who he finalizes as his VP. That's my, my armchair analysis of the situation. Do you feel like what some people have said which is voting for biden is just a voting for a lesser of two evils in that they're both accused of uh, sexual misdemeanors and that sort of thing i understand the argument um the problem is <clears throat> while yes voting for the lesser of two evils is still voting for an evil it's lesser and Biden, at, at least, I mean, he doesn't have a laundry list of accusations against him, not a lengthy one at any rate. I'd, I'll, Trump is such a nightmare that I'd, I'd vote for a bag of, of wet cat piss over him. And, and so, You'd have you'd have to be pretty horrendous um, for me to to do anything but just vote for the blue nominee because Trump is going to get us yeah. all killed. I think there's a there's a reasonable argument for that. I mean, I, as much as people still say I don't want to vote for uh, the candidate that's done X Y Z, but it does also feel like even it, this is exactly the same it's just a rerun of the whole hillary situation as far as i'm concerned where like when you compare like what are they going to be like on climate change they're just completely different people and that yeah. I, for me that can't be ignored uh people can disagree and i could i'm happy to be proved wrong but it it certainly feels like biden would not be making the mistakes with the coronavirus that trump is he would not be spouting his mouth off about taking hydroxychloroquine. <laughs> yeah, and in in which uh, Trump has a financial stake in France. You know? mm. So there is that. Yeah, uh, Biden would also, just based on his track record, he would surround himself with actual experts and people with actual experience and backgrounds in things, rather than just campaign donors and. You know, I like I like to rag on on Betsy DeVos because she's just so despicable. But you know, someone who never has set foot inside a public school is running the public school system. Yeah, we have. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but we have uh, had Michael Gove, which is somebody who during the Brexit campaign came forward and said we've had enough of experts. And he was education secretary, uh, so <laughs> the similarities. Uh, this, this, that field is getting narrower and narrower. Yeah, it's yeah. terrifying. Absolutely bloody terrifying. <laughs> yeah, as uh, Ischak says, the US has the same issue as UK. Conservatives won due... Hold on. Conservatives won due a lack of competent candidates on the other side and in fighting. Ah, okay, yeah. I think that's what we're talking about. Yeah, he was a question. got a good point. There was a, a, a uh, obviously, I do welcome other ideas, but there's a lot of support for what I'm saying. Brian says, I agree with David 100% there. Trump makes blunder after blunder that Biden wouldn't be making. Uh, thanks for your support, Dave2024. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I need seven years, don't I? Oh, never mind. There was a question. Oh, I think it was uh, Hopswatch. It was asking, what's... Junk Shop's view on the golden rule. 
I wasn't sure what that was. Um, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I mean, there's there's certainly worse philosophies. Um, I, a, a slightly better version of it might be do unto others as they would have you do unto them. Um, you know, because everybody doesn't want to be treated exactly the same way. And and if you take your, you know, if, for example, uh, to, you know, just to reach way back through the conversation to the beginning, if, if I were to strictly follow the golden rule, I'd be calling everybody they, because that's what, that's how I would have them do unto me. And not everybody wants to be called they. There are people who want to be called he or she or Zim or Zer or... Uh, other things i doubt there's very many people who actually want to be called it um <laughs> if they exist i will respect their choice i joke um casey said warren is was the best candidate in my opinion who would you have Amen. as the vp do you have warren doesn't I'd, fit the I'd, young cri criteria I I don't think at this point we want Warren as VP. I definitely want her on the cabinet. I want her in some kind of administrative position, but I I I think the ticket is already old and white enough. I would have I would have welcomed and I voted for Warren in the primary, but I don't think adding yet another painfully white senior citizen to the ticket is is going to do us any favors in the long haul, us being Democrats. Um, what else did Brian say? Oh, Brian said, it would be nice if we could have a sensible candidate make it through the process, which brings up the question, what do you actually make of the process itself? Because the... Um, What's it called? The Electoral College? The Electoral College, yes. Well, it doesn't make disaster. any fucking sense. Like, no, none whatsoever. <laughs> it, made, it made sense <laughs> when it was initiated because the idea was that you wanted the majority of the votes of the free, white, landholding men to be respected. Since that is no longer the criterion by which we judge majority, um, it doesn't work anymore. It's a it's an absolute disaster, and it's and the entire country has been gerrymandered within an inch of its life, and it's it's a nightmare. And I can say that as a white person. Imagine <laughs> if I were a person of color. I've, yeah, I found, always found that odd as well. When I had uh, Mandisa Latif Thomas on, uh, well over a hundred podcasts ago, I ended up um, trying to understand this because there's a lot of people of color that like to be referred to as people of color, but not colored people, and that's sometimes like a bit jarring. I'm like, well, okay, it does sound a bit nitpicky. It's still so. Clear. I thought the issue was with the word color. Um, but, yeah. There, there is a there is a history of colored people as a phrase being used in an in an extremely derogatory and uh, sense, and it it is by many people it is is held to be an artifact of a very oppressive time, uh, whereas people of color is is. A doesn't have the history. It doesn't have the baggage. At least that's again my understanding from a terminally white uh, perspective. <laughs> terminally. <laughs> uh, Dave, actually, yeah, I I didn't say it out loud, but uh, when you you were explaining about the applying they to everyone, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that would have been a, a false equivalence. I'm so glad that people are starting to notice these fallacies as well. Um, as they're being said, not that you actually invoked it, you were describing it. Um, I'm going to try and find some more questions in the, uh, the live chat as well. Um, so, 
when it comes down to like British politics and the situation there with Boris or Brexit, do you follow that at all? Are you are you in, uh, particularly into international politics? I, I try, um, and honestly, I tried harder before things went even more to shit over here, and <laughs> and now my my attention is is so wound up in just everything every bonkers thing that happens every single solitary day it's all i can do to keep track of the the two wings and fro wings of the government of one continent let alone trying to keep up with another so yeah i i, I guess the, the more intense selfish it... american yeah no, no it's, it makes sense i try and keep up um i'm trying to get into uh very different other guests as well i'm trying to find how many english speaking Asian and African guests I can have on. Like a president uh, in Kenya I'm trying to get in touch with and various different people like that. I'm going to have um, in four days I'll be with Courtney Hurd um, and she's from the International Atheist Alliance yeah, and she's I, done a massive yeah. campaign about Mubarak Bala. Yeah, who uh, is in Nigeria in a minute. Yeah, Kano province I think. Yeah. Un imprisoned under Sharia law for something he posted on Facebook that wasn't even illegal in the province in which he was when he posted it. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be talking about that. Um, and we're going to be I talking suspect. a lot. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that orga whole organization detached itself from Atheist Alliance International, which is uh, which the organization that John richards Fun. is part of yeah. so yeah we're going to be having a lovely podcast in four days if people want to join us for that there's various different other guests if i can have uh, an opportunity to, to say them the day after i'll have mama atheist uh, amanda's going to be on on the 27th uh, i'll do a live book reading on the 1st of june when the ebook is actually out i've also got andrew hall who does a, a wonderful channel about life advice and different things like um, what's the best piece of advice you ever got kind of content uh, which is interesting um, Stephen Woodford's going to be on on the 4th and we were meant to have a conversation two months prior at DaveCon about the, uh, the zeitgeist as it were and um, you know how to have conversations with people when it, it, we've had such a polarised community um, society as a whole as well we were talking about the woke we were talking about gateways to the alt-right and or, uh, debating molyneux because he's like f that would be four days five days after he's has his debate with stefan molyneux so we're going to be trying to dissect that one there's a, a very heavy podcast there but then the day yes. after we're gonna have a very light gentle podcast with an ex white supremacist uh in grumpy old dude so <laughs> I love him. He's fantastic. Um, I just wanted to throw that out there. We, we haven't quite finished yet. Don't worry, people. We still have contents. Uh, I'm still trying to find all these different questions because they don't flash up on Restream. Um, Brian says, I voted for Bernie but liked 2016 Bernie more than 2020 Bernie. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I don't know whether you have a particular opinion on that. Um, uh, not, not particularly. I, Bernie, honestly, he's just he's too far left. He never stood a snowball's chance. I like yeah. ninety percent of what he does and stands for and says, but I just I think he's too far left for the majority of everyone. Um, Julie says Sorry, there were that. some more. Oh, dear, don't worry about it. We know you're hallucinating, it's fine. Um, <laughs> there were some Bible-related questions further up. Uh, I probably aren't going to be able to find them. Repost them. If I've missed your question, just repost them, and I'll get to the bottom now while we uh, finish up. Uh, do you want to give people another shout-out to all your different contents where people can find you? Any future content that you might be producing as well to look forward to? 
Well, I'll uh, I'll be doing another uh, episode of improv Bible study, which is what I call my my Bible evisceration uh, content on Monday at uh, two o'clock central. That's I, I is uh, eight o'clock UK um, PM. Um, and I, uh, I, I try to stream at that time, Mondays and Wednesdays. Sometimes I make it Fridays as well, but reliably, I, uh, I try to stick to Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, my wife, Julie, and I, that's uh, Julie LaVoice in the chat, have a, a sort of a floating stream that happens on sometime on Thursdays. It's the as yet unnamed couples stream where we just talk about whatever's on our minds that week. Um, last week, I think it was uh, coronavirus idiots. Um, yesterday, it was uh, masturbation and shame. It's, it's just never any telling what the un, as yet unnamed couple stream is going to tackle. Hmm. So I, I think I mentioned off air about secular sexuality. Have you been on as a host yet or been invited? Uh, no, I have not. I am. I'm not. I'm not of that caliber yet. No, I, uh, I must say I um, so I'd, I'd love to do that. I'm meant to be on on the 11th of June. Um, and so I'll be going over the how fallacies um, sort of intertwine with various different arguments to do with uh, homosexuals and that sort of thing. So um, I'm going to have to do a little bit of prep for that. Um, yeah. But yeah, if, if people want to find me on other people's channels, then I'll be with Frank. Um, I've only got about eight subscribers. I'll, I'll throw some links out at some point. Um, Guild of Inquiry and Daily Atheist all around the same time at the end of this month. If uh, people want to try and check me out there. Uh, promoting the book and then secular sexuality we'll be going over all those different fallacies as well if you do have questions um, then you can call them up as well you don't just have to uh, put questions down into the live chat uh, so where was I there was a good question from who might have been Brian Stevens if either of you could snap your fingers and change one policy in America what would it be I'll let you go first only one. Um, Only one. <laughs> Let's make a short list and try and decipher where I'm going to go with it. Okay. Uh, we need a term limit on Supreme Court justices. Our Supreme Court justices are appointed for life, which means you get old, old fuckers <laughs> in charge most of the time. Um, some kind of blanket protection for uh, women's reproductive health slash rights, which are constantly under attack by the wonderful, wonderful religious right who are rising to greater and greater power here every day. Um, and as much as I can't believe I have to say this, some kind of truly ironclad separation of church and state. It's the, the church continues to spread its little tendrils further and further into the concrete of the state, and, and it's starting to crack in some alarming ways as a result. So those, those would be my top three off the top of my head. Yeah, particularly with that last one, I, I always, it, it feels like every podcast I mention this, because we obviously have a monarchy. And uh, I was reading up the uh, I think it was Amnesty International they do this report every year on free freedom of speech for each country and they they rank each country um yeah and there's some very surprising countries I think countries like I can remember correctly Taiwan is very good okay. um they so any country that is seeded from somewhere like China, China. or whatever well, that is, is obviously of sense. Go yeah the opposite direction yeah. yeah, so they ended up um, having the US as higher up than the UK. And that's because we've got so much institutionalized um, favoritism towards religion. And yet we are a majority non-believing country. 
So when it comes to the third option, uh, I wouldn't be too concerned about the whole freedom from uh, religion. Obviously, tr try to, to to achieve that. I think that's admirable, and you've you've got the constitution that clearly says it. It just needs to be enforced properly. But yeah, we'd have far more non-believers. The, the people tasked with enforcing, the, the offices tasked with enforcing that are increasingly being filled by people who don't want to enforce that. And we, we've got a the, just this skyrocketing trend of unbelievably conservative religious individuals attaining ever higher and higher office and ever greater influence over higher and higher offices and it's for those those of us secular here it's absolutely bloody terrifying mm. to watch interesting uh great dane i just want some point of clarification uh your guest junk shop said they're forced to vote for Biden because Trump is unpalatable, but he's, or they, again, they're, they're the one mis misgendering you. Don't drink. Don't drink. <laughs> That's fine. Perfectly fine. They uh, then disregard Sanders, even though he agrees with Sanders' policies. Can he explain? They. I mean, I'm just reading it. I'm just reading it. I'm not. <laughs> I got you. I got you. <laughs> um... <laughs> You, you've you've always you've always got to play the game, and Sanders is too far to the left to appeal to. There there are an insufficient number of people like me to to make him a viable uh, option. If, if I had to, to sum it up in a nutshell, sometimes you just got to grit your teeth and, and vote for an evil just because it is the lesser one, no matter how far removed that that option is from what you actually want. That's that's yeah. me trying to unify those those two points there, at least in my own mind. Yeah, I uh, I, I am in favor of tactical voting. I did. Um stand for the greens in local election and i there was 13 votes locally for just like a borough council election and there were 13 votes between the winner and the next party and i got something like 100 votes so then the next election i didn't stand and they won by like 700 or something so it was nothing to do with me but it was still like this idea has now switched locally where they had uh, 99 percent conservative council and it's now something like 50 something percent it's just been shattered over two years wow. so we've got another election what should be or should have been rather um this month uh, but i'm not sure what's happening with that because yeah obviously people can't get out to 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 vote it's not safe yeah. <laughs> um i just want to throw out just before we we close uh anyone on uh twitter or facebook watching this come over to youtube and uh subscribe and like the video and that pushes the algorithm you don't have to necessarily be you know one of my five thousand pounds a day patreons not that i have any of those uh, but <laughs> you don't have to be that in order to help your youtube channels uh your favorite youtube channels from growing you can get into the chat you can share links uh, if you're sufficiently trusted with, by a particular creator, you'll be one of their mods. Uh, you could end up retweeting and sharing the videos, trying to um, self-promote. It's very, very difficult for small creators. And as such, I can sit here and go subscribe to Junk Shop. If Junk Shop comes up to a random stranger on Twitter, and it's like, well, what are you trying to sell me? You yeah. know, so we've got to help each other. Um, and it can be done for free. So if you want to see all your favorite creators growing quicker, then please do um, like things, uh, subscribe on YouTube, uh, follow on Twitch as well. So then that really helps in terms of 
affiliation and then I can get adverts on Twitch. And then if once I've got adverts on Twitch, it means that I can then, uh, something come, something's come up on stream. Um, then I can uh, spend more time making this, these sorts of content because I then could do the clips again that I'm considering doing and that sort of thing for the podcast. But that really helps the algorithm and I don't have the time to do it and I don't have the money to employ somebody else to do it. If you can help on Patreon, that's fantastic for either myself or Junk Shop. But if you can't, we understand it's perfectly okay. There's many things that you can do to help. Uh, have I missed anything? Uh, I think so. I don't. I don't think so. Just okay. yeah. Every, just remember, it costs literally nothing to click like on a video. Mm. As, as I struggle with likes myself, it took me a while to figure out that that was actually something that meant something. So now I just click like when I start watching the video. It's just automatic. You can do that while the ad while the ad loads. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I have made a conscious effort to try and watch other people's adverts as well. There are some very odd adverts that are out there. I think um, I sent one to uh, Rachel Oates. Uh, she'll, she'll be interested in, she said she was interested in possibly doing a response video to one of these adverts, which is out there. It's called like uh, the social menzies or whatever the, the actual website's called. And it's saying like, straight away off the top of the advert this advert is not for women um if you're a woman this is gonna probably offend you men have you ever wanted to convince women to sleep with you on a first date and it goes into like this whole two three minute thing i watched the whole thing because it was her advert artist culture yeah have we not moved beyond pickup artist cult it's 2020 oh it seems to have frozen what's going on let's get rid uh, of that oh it's actually frozen on stream as well oh no oh no oh what an end is everything is everything frozen oh it's off wow what an ending indeed as soon as we mention it there's uh <laughs> Is it frozen on Zoom? No, Zoom's fine. So it's just OBS. Oh, no. What's going on? Huh. We we're, we we're moving. We're now moving on OBS. And it's green on. Boom. We, oh, I think we are just starting to move around. They can still hear us. Okay, so they can hear well, us, but they just can't see us. Ooh, that's exciting. OBS oh, again. Right. We're going live. It's uh, anything could happen. It's always anything an adventure, happen. isn't it? Um, everyone should go. We're going to end up uh, end it now anyway. Everyone should go subscribe to uh, Junk Shop. Um, I do. I do quite like uh, listening into some of the readings. Sometimes I can't take in too much Bible readings. Um, but so, some good. of the very good moments. <laughs> yeah, understandable. Some of the very good moments are you know like getting a particular passage in. Yeah. Insert some rage. So everyone should go check it out. Uh, everyone should go subscribe, like stuff. Maybe continue the conversation on Discord if you like as well. The Discord available uh, for both of us, I think. I think so. So, yeah. Everyone uh, everyone, go check that out. Junk Shop, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a terrific time. It has. Take care, everybody.